What's going on everybody? Dato Doi here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video. And this time we're going to be talking about the tier list of the game. I got the idea to do this video because one, tier lists are always so much fun to talk about. They always drive a lot of good discussion on where characters should be placed and why different people value different things in characters. And the second reason I wanted to do this video is because while watching the Winter Brawl stream for Dragon Ball Fighters, I saw a lot of the Twitch chat focused around this one guy who played 16 and lost and a lot of the comments said, imagine playing 16 and still losing. Now I know 16 is very good, but is he really that much better than the rest of the cast that simply playing him should be seen as going for an easy win? And I thought the best way to find that out would be to look at top level players tier list and then make one of my own to see where my thoughts on the characters stand in comparison to theirs and see where certain characters fall. So let's start by taking a look at Sonic Fox's tier list for Dragon Ball Fighters. Now there are certain caveats to this, as Sonic Fox is known to change up his tier list very frequently so take this as his current opinions, and nothing more. It's also super early on in the game's lifespan, so big changes can happen fast. So I would say if you want to stay up to date with tier lists, you should constantly be involved with the Dragon Ball Fighters community, and see how the general thoughts on certain characters changes when new things are discovered. Okay, so this was Sonic Fox's first tier list, and here's the updated one, and currently this would be the up to date one. In the Twitter thread where he posted this, he talked about some characters and why he put them where they are. He also streamed the session in which he made the original tier list, so I'm going to assume his thoughts from that session carry over to this one, as well as some of the new information in the Twitter thread. For those of you that have never seen a tier list like this, let's break it down really quickly. The closer to the right side you are, the more well-rounded that character is, meaning they have a lot of tools for different situations. If the character is located more on the left, that means they have more faults and are usually better in very specific circumstances. The higher you are, the better you are, and the lower you are, the worse the character is. And with that out of the way, let's start by going from left to right on Sonic Fox's updated tier list. So the lowest on the list with the most faults is my main man Krillin. Sonic Fox feels this way because Krillin's assist really isn't that good, and his range is super short, much like Teen Gohan in that regard. Other than that, Sonic Fox didn't make his opinions on Krillin too clear, so that's all we have for now. Right after Krillin is Nappa, and Sonic Fox said that Nappa is way too linear of a character. When he gets the Cyberman down, he's much better, but in order to get the Cyberman down safely, you have to have somebody else lock your opponent down for you. Right above Nappa is Majin Buu, which I agree with. We haven't seen much Majin Buu yet, so we can't really say for sure where he is, but he definitely has a lot of faults in his size and in how slow the character is. The placement of Super Saiyan Vegeta may shock a lot of people, and that's because Sonic Fox has stated in the past that he feels Vegeta is really only good because of his assist and isn't that great of a character on his own which is something I actually agree with. Piccolo, on the other hand, is super low here, and I would guess it's for similar reasons as Sonic Fox probably doesn't feel like he has a lot of versatility in his kit. Going back to the left side, we have Gotenks, who's right in the middle, which would be around 8 tier, but has a lot of faults. Again, a really short range, and has to get in really close, which is hard for a character of his stature. And above that is Android 18, which I find surprising, as a lot of Android 18 have been seen at high level play purely for their pressure. But again, this side doesn't necessarily mean bad, it just means specific cases, and I can definitely see that with 18. Outside of pressure, she's not that great of a character. Right after 18, we have Yamcha, who definitely has a lot of faults on his own, as most of his mix-ups can simply be jabbed out of, so you have to really know what your opponent is expecting in order to get the most out of Yamcha. After that is Beerus, who has amazing set play, but again, very limited. You have to get them in the corner in order to put the pressure on with these orbs. And right smack in the middle, we have Ginyu and Frieza. Ginyu, I would say, would probably go up because he's such a hard character to figure out everything with, and Freeze is just a very standout character for being very simple to use and also having a lot of range on his normals. Above that, we have Super Saiyan God Goku, who actually has moved up quite a bit from his last tier list. And that's because Goku Blue's neutrals have been expanded on since then. Using the dive kick to gain space and get a hit on your opponent, or even on block calling in an assist to cover for you, is really good with this guy. After that, we have Trunks, who we've seen as a beast in the corner and handles the neutral pretty well in addition to that. Let's just do all three of the well-rounded people at once. We have Super Saiyan God Vegeta, Tien, and Goku. All three are very good in a lot of situations, and for the most part, make great use out of a little meter. In Sonic Fox's tier list, Team Gohan also is very well-rounded, but because of his short range, he is a little bit lower than the rest of them. And now we're moving on to our top tier. We have Hit, Goku Black, Android 21, Kid Buu, Adult Gohan, Cell, and of course, Android 16. Let's start from the top on this one. Android 16 is a powerhouse as his auto combo is like a mix-up and has a command grab in it. Kid Buu is very good because of his assist, and he also has an amazing level 3, which is actually better than a lot of others on Sparking Blast opponents as it only hits twice technically, major amount of damage. 
Then we have Ultimate Gohan, who has proven to be a pest in the past with his high-low game. And then we have Cell, which is just an amazing point character. Hit, which Sonic Fox uses personally very well, has a great assist for combo extension. Goku Black, which is just an all-around amazing character. And Android 21, who really excels in neutral. And with that out of the way, that's Sonic Fox's tier list. Clearly you can see a train of thought that if they're good in the neutral, and they do a lot of damage, and have mix-ups, those characters are going to be top tier. And that goes for every game. Now again, you'll see that even the lowest characters are still B tier, which is pretty good. And you can make a lot of these characters work with the right team. For example, I play Krillin, Yamcha, and Super Saiyan Goku. And that team works really good together. So again, the tier list in this game isn't exactly that scary. Krillin can beat Android 16 just fine if you're good enough as Krillin. But have you ever wondered what a far less talented player's tier list would look like? No? Well, okay, well the rest of this video is going to be my tier list anyway, so let's get started with mine. So you can see in my tier list I have Majin Buu, Nappa, and Vegeta worse than Krillin. Simply because I play Krillin a lot and I don't feel like he has as many faults as these characters. But of course his range still hurts him, and I haven't found anything so crazy that he's worth being an A tier. But he's definitely high B tier. Vegeta on the other hand barely cracks A tier, but again, I don't feel that outside of his assist he's a very complete character. Also in A tier we have Yamcha and Beerus, because again, while they do have their faults, they excel in certain situations with teammates that help them out. And Team Gohan on my list is actually the opposite of Sonic Fox. I feel like he has a lot of faults, but if you land a hit, this man pumps out damage. So I feel like that puts him at around high S tier, but again, he has a lot of faults getting in. Gotenks and Vegeta Blue also find themselves on this side of the screen, because in my mind they too have problems getting in, or they have problems elsewhere. If I were to change something on this list, I think I would move Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta over a bit. And then we have Android 18, Kid Buu, and Ginyu. I feel like Kid Buu is really good, but not as good as some other people have stated, and Ginyu still has a lot of room for improvement, don't get me wrong. But I feel like right now he's a little bit too many faults to be well-rounded, but again, he's right there. Right on the side of well-rounded, we have Tien and Frieza, who again are just fantastic characters with a lot of tools for different situations. And then if you look above them, you see I have Piccolo and Super Saiyan God Goku, both of which I feel are great characters, and Piccolo excels in the corner with his Hellzone grenade mix-ups, and Super Saiyan God Goku just has a mix-up on his auto combo, and can play the neutral really well. To the right of them we have Trunks and Hit, which again, very good in neutral, and do a lot for the combo game. On the far right side to well-rounded we have Super Saiyan Goku, which I feel is the benchmark for being a super well-rounded character, which I think is what Arx has set out to accomplish in the first place. And now we have the top five in my mind. Android 21, Adult Gohan, Goku Black, Cell, and Android 16. You might notice that Android 16 isn't as well-rounded as Cell or Gohan, and I did that intentionally because I think that while he is a better character, he's not nearly as versatile as Cell and Gohan. And again, you got Black, who is so well-rounded, it's ridiculous, and Android 21, who is probably the best at neutral in this game, in my opinion. And with that said, that's my tier list. Now, you probably have a lot of disagreements, and I really do want to hear them in the comments below. Tier lists are all about discussions and where you think characters should be placed based on what you find important in a character. So yeah, leave me your thoughts in the comments down below, as I'll be down there as always. And while you're down there, if you enjoy this video and channel, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm Dr. Doya, and I'll see you in the next one.